Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Project CD Chronicles, or welcome if this is your first time here. Let's start the video with this online editor that allows us to do nothing less than program on all our retro machines. And as you can see, there are truly countless options directly from the browser, complete with a connected emulator. Now, if you're interested in this video, stay with me until the end because we'll go through all the various features of this editor add some information, see it in action, and understand its limitations, strengths, weaknesses, and what this tool can do for us. Stay with me. All right, now let's take a step back and go to the Retro Game Coder page, and this is where our whole journey begins. I'll also leave you the link to Retro Game Coder in the description where you can directly launch the online IDE. So what is it about? As you can see here, we have the ZX Spectrum section, or in any case, we also have the BBC Micro section, and we also have the Commodore section. Let's say that uh, as far as game consoles are concerned, uh, several game consoles are emulated from the Atari to the NAS to the Vectrex and so on. As for the powerful and versatile computers, and we'll endeavor to meticulously examine most of them, it comprehensively allows you through its highly integrated and efficient compiler to seamlessly run the executable code directly within the robust and responsive online emulator. So how does all this magic happen? The comprehensive article is substantial and explains in great detail how it was meticulously made. I absolutely love, after working extensively with the code, the immense respect I have gained for Steve Huggs. He basically created a fork of this program because he had collaborated with this, I'll call him an artist, but really the programmer. And from what was the original idea, he significantly expanded its features. In particular, he loved uh, and still loves programming like on the Commodore 64, but he also included other machines such as the VC20 and the BBC Micro. So how does the magic happen? Let's say we have two steps here. So this is Code Mirror. I've used it myself in the past. I'm not using it at the moment, but for programming in VB, it's a particular online editor. Maybe I'll come back to it and present it to you on the channel. And this is fundamental because Mirror, well, it needs no introduction. It's pretty much the editor par excellence for programming, widely used and incredibly popular online across various development communities. And what exactly happens then in this widely adopted and highly functional environment? Two substantial steps happen. One, as it clearly states, is the fundamental use of what is essentially a compiler. Here you can distinctly observe that Code Mirror has an underlying and highly efficient compiler which is the well-known and robust CC65. Furthermore, this entire system is meticulously compiled, no less, with mscripten, specifically engineered and optimized to make it run seamlessly and effectively online. So, in essence, this crucial component is the compiler itself. Moreover, the CC65 development environment, a comprehensive and robust tool set, is readily available and fully compatible across a multitude of major operating systems and diverse computing platforms. But the magic doesn't end here, undoubtedly, because they also use, well, and we'll get to that in the future plans section anyway, they use, so to speak, online emulators when it comes to um, the emulators being used. The supported platforms range from the Commodore, Atari, Apple, Amstrad, to the NES, ColecoVision, and more. And here you can see, uh, I've already launched a few examples. Uh, this is pure C programming. This is Commodore 64, Welcome Adventure. Uh, this IDE and emulation tool, or you can do the same thing, uh, still programming in C for the BBC Micro. And then we also have the entire section for direct online programming for the Spectrum. By the way, here the article goes into technical details, but I just wanted to show you this for the sake of completeness. We have the introduction of various emulators for different chips, and in particular, there's the emulator that was ported from the BBC within FS Basic, as well as internal projects in which the author participated. Like this one, maybe I'll enlarge it so you can see it better. Chips designed to emulate the experience as closely as possible as if they were actual real machines. Now, what else can I say? We can look at a few more examples here and then we'll get back to uh, the feature plane. In this case, you see the audio is temporarily disabled, but you can also enable the audio. 
it's truly a complete product this one is already running and you'll notice there is an almost endless series of programs that we can view but we can also build them directly and of course download them as our own file you see download from source let's see you can also upload directly to our online terminal and so you can have a direct experience on the physical vice but also have a direct experience on your actual real machine let's maybe take a look at a few more examples as there really are so many for example here there's a, a text adventure a, a full scrolling magazine and here's a sprite multiplexer library which as you can see here is already implemented and manages in C all the handling of the multiplexer as you can see it's also challenging because this multiplexer management one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so there are at least 20 sprites maybe even more however managing these multiplexer sprites becomes quite demanding because you always have to refer to the sorting algorithm now here I notice a slight flickering it could potentially be optimized further because in reality CC 65 is a compiler that runs fast with the right optimizations it's not slow of course there are perhaps some compilers today that are a bit more um, performant like WGBCC or Oscar 64 but this one and especially for the purpose of bringing code written in the 80s and 90s to these machines is definitely the elite choice because some features of modern compilers necessarily have to meet the requirements of C89 and C99 and you have to go back in time since clearly something has changed in the standard. You can see and this is also definitely shown in the online examples for CC65 that it really is a complete suite. By the way, here you can see that the code has also been split, split into multiple source files. So we have the whole IDE part, we have the part that directly calls what is the raster. And so rather than a single file, it's a real project that allows us to program this display multiplexer. Then from here, animations and so on need to be added. Um, what can I say? Let's maybe continue with a few more examples and also move on for now. To look at the BBC micro micro and some other types of emulators here we see the classic hello world let's also load the inline assembler directly listen you can probably hear it being recorded from the screen as well it really emulates the sound of when the physical machine was turned on and it's the same noise clearly in this BBC micro I think for reasons of nostalgia, he wanted to include this wonderful platform as well. By the way, let's continue with the Zek Spectrum and here he has provided us with some code online. We also have the BIOS routines and this one, which is Cosmic Impulse, I think it's provided in this way. Now here, I'm not sure how it will work. All right, we've already finished. This is the remake, which is a space. Here too, the ZX Spectrum is programmed directly in C, clearly taking advantage of all the assembly components as well. Space Invader, by the way, is really, really well made. Of course, we couldn't leave out our beloved and legendary VIC-20, which I remind you is not a machine to be underestimated because it sold over a million units. And it's the machine that paved the way for the Commodore 64, which of course sold 20 million, but the VIC-20 was the trailblazer. Here we can see a Hello World, but we can also see other games. Well, in this case, we have another type of Hello World border play and a Siege game. So this one is definitely a bit more substantial as a game. Siege, developed by 8-Bit Workshop, and then this is the actual game itself. And let's consider through can we definitively say that it's entirely in basic because in actual fact it's incredibly easy to program in this particular manner on our older or even our current computing machines that it essentially becomes very much like programming in the language of basic there are other tools that do porting to more compilers and more platforms more platforms than compilers but with this one we undoubtedly have an online package with everything already set up if you like we can take a look at a few more examples of, let's say, the possibilities this online IDE offers us. Then we'll look at future plans and afterwards we can discuss any clarifications in the comments. 
Going through the game consoles, we can emulate and program for the Atari 2600, the NES, the ColecoVision, which is essentially everything C65 allows us to do with some additions, the Vectrex, and as you can see, there's truly an endless array of possibilities. As for computers, there are the more modern ARM 7, the BBC Micro that we've already seen, the Atari 800, the ZX Spectrum, the Amstrad CPC 6182, there's also a basic which we might take a look at directly here and then there's a whole range of platforms available for MAME as well. Uh, let's take a look at what basic is. Option dialect Dartmouth. It's an old basic that was used back in the day. Let's run it and see what happens. All right, here it is. Hello, let's program in basic. Would you mind typing in your name and so on and so forth? We could also take a look at a few others if we want. These are Fridos, the ColecoVision, the Atari, and also the Z Machine Inform. And I'll tell you about this one right away. I wanted to talk to you about the Z Machine Inform because uh, thanks to this Z Machine, uh, none other than Zork uh, was ported. And here you have the programming that's practically original from the Z Machine itself, which is basically a series of, uh, well, it translates into a kind of bytecode. And this bytecode can then essentially be ported anywhere. Now, by the way, I'll also take this opportunity to mention that in a few days, the IFCOMP competition 2025 is starting and I'll be participating as well. If I ever come back in the future, which I don't really think I will, I'll definitely use these tools to program something undoubtedly more substantial. Colossal Cave Adventure. And then there's a whole range of repositories. Adventure Land, for example, is the one by Scott Adams. And there are so many adventures written specifically for Inform 7 and Zcode. By the way, Adventure Land is Scott Adams' very own adventure. Greetings to him. And I was the author of Return to Claymore Castle with his kind permission for this 2.0 adventure. And to this day, I'm still in touch with him. I hope he's done or did a great job. But I'll talk to you about that in another video when I discuss the FCOM. And of course, I couldn't help but show you Adventure Land and this. An interactive classic by Scott Adams. And here clearly, forest. You are in a forest. Obviously, exit north, south, east, west map. You can also see trees. And from here on, the whole adventure obviously begins. Well, I've given you what I think is a definitely interesting overview. Let's go back to this part. I've already talked to you about the platforms, how it works. I've already explained how it works anyway. Your source code, which is basically about uploading, downloading, and so on. Now let's focus on what the feature plans are. So the author clearly states that it doesn't end here because he definitely wants to bring this kind of experience to a more advanced and so to speak better level first and foremost on one hand, uh, to significantly improve the overall experience of the internal browser and the underlying code itself, uh, specifically this particular aspect, in order to be able to program more efficiently and effectively, and thus make substantial and meaningful improvements to the system as a whole. But that's not all. They also want to include a whole range of other compilers, some of which are already in progress, such as the Commodore PET and, believe it or not, CPM. So there are some special features regarding 16-bit machines. And here we're talking about Amiga, Atari ST, but that's not all. In their future plans, and this is truly an excellent compiler, which we might take a look at later, is Pascal, specifically bringing the TRSS compiler online. Then, of course, I'll definitely talk to you about this in another video. It's an excellent, excellent compiler. Rascal inside Turbo Pascal. Let's get back to us. What's next? Well, I really want people to definitely try out the integrated development environment, the IDE, and through them, bring me more examples and code so that I can improve it further and make it even better. And that's it. If you want to support this project, you can definitely sign up with your email and then have access to all the various available resources. By the way, I see here that there's also a blog, so this is definitely a site I'll be coming back to. By the way, look here, Commodore 64 text adventure objects in action, and then a whole series of available resources, some of which I already use and why not? If you want to participate, there's the contact page. 
what else can I say? Let's get back to this particular and truly iconic part, so to speak, retro programming online, featuring the classic Commodore 64, the versatile VIC-20, the powerful 128, the unique Adiso, the distinctive ZX Spectrum, and indeed all of our beloved and cherished machines that, well, we absolutely love and adore. What else can I say? Uh, thank you all for staying with me up to this point, and we'll meet again here on Project CD Chronicles soon. Thank you all, Claudio.